Hello. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Patricia Ryan Matson, and I was part of the TAPS family for a number of years. I retired in 2005 as a, an emerita. I'd been involved with the acting program since 1977 when I joined the, the drama department, and I retired in 2005. The area that I began to develop in the late 90s was the improvisation program. And I founded the Stanford Improvisers and um, developed courses related to improv and also worked with the School of Engineering and the Mayfield Fellows and others. Also during that time, I wrote a book called Improv Wisdom, Don't Prepare, Just Show Up. And actually it's, uh, it, it's that book that has me um, thinking it might be worthwhile to offer a few ideas to all of us who are uh, sheltering in place during this time, because if nothing else, our lives today are an improvisation. It's very hard to plan for the kind of unknowns that we have right now. And there's often a misunderstanding about what improvisation is or means. It's commonly thought to be a comedy. Um, those witty, uh, funny folks like whose line is it anyway, Drew Carey and Robin Williams, uh, but not me, of course. However, we discover that improvisation is not, is not simply a form of comedy or a way of doing comedy as theater, but it's also a, a way of working, modus operandi. Improv is a kind of mindset that is being applied now to many different areas of, of uh, interest. I know of improv teachers who are working to uh, train caregivers for Alzheimer's disease as well as uh, first-hand responders. Improv has become a modality that's being used in uh, business and uh, creativity and engineering. The design school at Stanford often uses improv ideas and games and principles. The reason that I wanted to speak with you for a little bit today is that the this particular point in time when we're um, sheltered in place and dealing with a lot of unknowns about the future. I've had a number of, of letters from readers of the book saying, you know, the principles of improv have been very helpful, at, at, especially at this time when, we're, when there's so much up in the air and our whole life feels like an improvisation. The book Improv Wisdom broke down the uh, improv mindset into 13 maxims or principles that we use when we improvise, rules, if you will. And perhaps the most well-known of the improv rules is the notion of yes and. And it has to do with opening ourselves to an idea or to whatever comes our way, accepting it and using that, building upon it. So it's, it's contrary to any sort of notion of, um, of conflict or um, debating about what's the best idea. Improvisers take the first idea that is there and they build on it, they make it into something good and useful. And so there's a, there's a way of approaching uh, a problem, almost anything, uh, using the improviser's mindset and these 13 principles. I've realized that um, it's hard to remember 13 of anything. So I was able to distill the 13 maxims of improv to four principles that are easier to remember because they all begin with A. And the first is attention. And the kind of attention that I'm going to prescribe is what is often being called now, nowadays mindfulness. That is really noticing more about the reality that you're living in. Putting your mind uh, along with your physical attention, with where your eyes are going and your, and your brain is directed. Beginning to, to attend to the world that we're in with greater care and uh, respect. 
Um, some who teach mindfulness, I think, also include the notion of kindness in, in, the, in what mindfulness represents, sort of a soft opening to the world. So, so we have to notice where our attention is placed. And I think it's really easy in our um, sequestered worlds to get distracted, distracted by all the things around us that uh, draw our attention, um, devices, televisions, uh, as well as um, being often in a working environment now surrounded by uh, members of your family or your children. So where we place our attention is the beginning of, uh, of the road to, that we tread upon when we're an improviser. Once we notice what's there, once we take it in, once we're actually cognizant of the world that we're in, improvisers then accept the reality that they're in in order to work with it. And that therein comes the yes and idea. So improvisers uh, accept reality rather than fighting it or wishing it were not so. Attention, acceptance. The third A is appreciation. It has to do with trying to find the kernel of good in the situation that we're in or find what is workable rather than simply looking at what's not okay about the situation they're in. Improvisers find the good and use it and praise it, work with it. So what's right about the situation that you're in now? What, what are the elements of your, your new reality that you can be appreciating, uh, appreciative of? Now, once we have paid attention, accepted the reality that we're in, find a way to appreciate it. There it, next comes the fourth principle, which is action. That's stepping into the reality and and going to work, doing what needs to be done, whatever that is. It might be our work work, that what needs to be done may be finish a project and pass it on. It may be listening carefully to someone who needs our help and attention. But action is really the, the heart of improvisation. We're not just sitting back thinking about what might be a good idea and theorizing and um, living in a theoretical world. I think uh, Robert Poynton, who is a, uh, an improv teacher and writer in the Pacific Northwest, wrote a book called Everything's an Offer. And uh, th that actually is when, when we, when we're trying to improvise, there's nothing that is off limits. Everything that is in our visual field, everything that comes our way becomes part of the potential solution. So um, we let go of a particular outcome, let go, we notice more, that's the uh, attention A. So we're giving up on some specific goal in favor of trying to really understand more about what is happening. And then the third of his principles is let go, notice more, and use everything. Certainly in these sequestered times, we're, um, we're being challenged to find creative ways to use the things in our refrigerator, for example. Uh, the improviser, by definition, always have, has what he or she needs. That there is, there's no way in which an improviser can be short-stocked, if you will because the whole idea is that we use what's there rather than thinking up, gee, what I wish I had if we had unlimited um, shopping to do. <clears throat> Let go. Let go of fears and worries. There's a, a notion that worrying is actually like praying for something you don't want to happen. <laughs> Improvisers accept where they are look around, use everything, and try to make sense out of it, and then act. 
um, I <clears throat> there's a notion of ready fire aim and that has to do with how improvisers go about solving a problem they act first and then build upon that action to make sense out of it it's kind of uh, counter counterintuitive there's a lot of uh, performance that's actually beginning to happen in the world of improvisational theater the bay area theater sports in san francisco are doing uh, regular weekend performances on friday and saturday nights at eight o'clock that are free on television if you go to their website, uh, you can get a link to how to see the shows. And even our own Stanford improvisers have done, um, have done an online show. So you might check out the, the SIMPS uh, web pages or their Facebook posts to find out when, they were, uh, when they're going to be performing next. So I'm, my hope for all of you is that you can continue to improvise your lives saying yes to what comes your way, um, building, upon, building upon the reality that we're in and being helpful to each other. The improviser's mindset can be, um, can be a helpful rubric to use as, uh, as we challenge, as we face these challenging times. Also, the book Improv Wisdom has some more ideas about how to improvise your life. So, uh, thanks for listening. I've enjoyed talking to you all, and uh, here's to happy improvisations. <laughs>